Hello, this is Haka Devine, and today I am continuing with Beasts of the Old Letters, a supposed book of, from um, SCP-1762. This is my second time with the book, and we are going to get right into this. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't enjoy the video, then I don't know. That's really up to you at that point, isn't it? Sorry for where we left off. They drop off dwellers. Whew. At the edges of the coral flats and bountiful cliffs, where the seaside lake, where the seaside takes a plunge into cooler waters, pods, or drop off dwellers float, then bob lazily in a peaceful slumber. They are shaped like a teardrop that grew immensely swollen on one side, with a small pointed tail that, that does little in terms of moving its enormous body. Dwelli dwellers rely more on the current to move themselves going for months at a time without food until drifting back to the fantastic lands. Usually up to 8 feet long, there are two distinct species of dwellers. The dwellers of the coral flats as possess distinct growths on their heads, which are actually coral colonies that fall and become affixed during feeding times. Coral dwellers are a light blue color with lighter rings dotting their backs. Cliff dwellers are muddled brown with much more numerous blue spots. Their, toe end, their tails end in a clump of streamer-like skin flaps that ripple and twirl as the dweller slowly moves through the waters. Dwellers come to the fantastic lands once a year, crawls during the spring, and cliffs in the fall. At the coral flats, dozens of dwellers lie side by side at, a sea, at the drop-off's edge, where together they inhale huge amounts of seawater, sucking down the old, dead, leftover remains that accumulated over the winter when they were are done feeding on the debris. The reefs are once again new, and begin a new cycle of life. On the bountiful cliffs, dwellers spit out water uh, high into the air at the fruit trees above, freeing hundreds of heavy trees from their burn and, and into and their mouths. Life below also rely on the falling fruit for a final feast before winter comes, when they either must go on a long journey to warm waters or wait out in hibernation. Regardless of which season, drop-off dwellers play a key role in making sure the coasts of the fantastic lands stay vibrant. The Escobarg Forest While not as large or as dense as either the Soft Needle or the Black Rock Forest, the Escobarg Forest and its stunning groves are a popular destination for commoners and explorers alike. Despite its name, the Escobarg Forest is not actually a forest, it is instead a single large organism. Each of the trees in the forest is run or sent up by a large and complex root system which is impeded in Escobarg's peak. The trunks of these runners are hollowed out, and there are openings to the hollow interior on the tops and sides of the trunks. It will often funnel in through the top opening and blow out through the side openings, creating a variety of tones. The leaves on the branches of these trees these grow in, cur in a curled funnel-like shape. The constant introduction of tones by the runner as fails to grow up with a flowing, improvisational melody, providing a pleasant acoustic background for visitors. This constant stream of sound is then funneled into the forest leaves, into the centers of the spirals, where the air once again enters into with the inner workings of the runners. Wood nymphs and scholars who have studied the groves believe that this constant and passing back and forth of music between the trees is the forest thinking to itself. Among these, there is a small following which believes the forest is only asleep and that the great wood beasts will one day awake and rise out of Escobarg Peak. The unique hollowed out trunks of the Esperg Forest provide habitats for numerous small animals, including isable populations of bird waffles and zutro and zutru, neither of which are on this list. The forest is also 
The only location in which you both open that squirrels I found naturally. This vibrant ecosystem makes the forest popular among amateur naturalists and seasoned explorers alike. Yet another creature that is not on the list. Hmm. Fire mains. <sighs> Intensely proud animals. Fire mains from the Izanu plains and prides ranging from 10 to 15 members. Closely resembling a lion at base, fire mains are also, are so named for the scarlet air Redescent hair is a ring the necks of both the male and female, and raised on the sides and back, eggs and horizontal or stripes. This fur is highly prized as material for clothing, though there are very strict laws placed on firemane hunting. However, unlike the lion, firemane possesses two pairs of antlers that rise regularly from their heads behind the ears like a stag, and race across the savannah on three pairs of scaly reptilian legs. Firemanes love the thrill of the chase while in pursuit of prey, often purposely letting the prey go should they catch too quickly. While some may say this game of catch and release is cruel, it is nonetheless a fascinating spectacle to see as firemen becomes a flaming blur on the grassy fields. When on hunting, they can be seen in racing each other and if approached with caution present and presented with respect, other beings such as wizards, elves, and even dragons. A lucky few have been blessed with the fortune of even writing them. A magician I know, named Glang, told me his account of writing a fireman he befriended years ago. He said at first he held on for dear life as the beast took off, but as he gained his hold, it was an exhilarating and unforgettable experience. As he and the fireman raced through the night sky, they almost looked like a comet flying along the ground. Gyro hmm. gliders, a type of newt like creature native to the uh, branches and cliffs of the southern sea. Gyro gliders are unusual for amphibians because they possess fully functional wings, or something close to them at least. These wings resemble long webbed fins that can open and close like a fan when the gyro glider contracts and relaxes its muscles. There are two pairs stacked directly on top of one another. With the bottom at set slightly longer, unlike birds or backs that flap their wings up and down, the gyro glider spins its wings in a circle. The top set spinning in clockwise, the bottom in reverse. Gyro gliders are thrill seekers, particularly in the males. Despite during the mating season and summer, they can be seen making life risking leaps off the cliff walls to the beach below, forming a multitude of spins and flips on the way down to the beach below. The closer they come to the beach before pulling up to safety, the more attention they get from unpotential mates. Females can also be seen jumping, though they prefer to glide and loop as, as a, opposed to the male's chaotic, flamboyant routine. But not pre performing daredevil jumps, they spend most of their time clinging to the beach cliffs, or within the many holes and cracks of the rock. These creatures come in a stunning array of colors, ranging from turquoise and white to pink, ink and gold to silver and green. It is common for gyro gliders to mate with one that does not possess their own color or scheme. The, this practice continues to produce wider rays of different shades and color combinations. Gyro gliders lay their eggs in treacherous waters full of hidden rocks and boulders, thereby discouraging predators from making a meal. Their eggs are round and numerous, like a fish's, and code in an adhesive if that anchors the egg to the uh, rocks. The young hatch within 30 days and will spend the first few weeks of their life in the water until their wings develop. Afterwards, they will spin and loop up to the rest of the colony, ready to become the next generation of daredevil jumpers. I suppose I can go for a few more. It's only been about 10 minutes. Surprisingly, these are, are, are getting short. <sighs> Hopster Buffers, a charming and oddly entertaining species, Hopster Buffers were created by the uh, Flux Elves about a hundred years ago using an array of housework and cooking spells. The Hopster Buffers' goal to prepare and serve delicious food whenever, wherever and whenever a banquet is held. 
We have uh, fairy resembles a large white egg with a single colored dot in the center of their faces that superficially looks like a simple eye. Usually blue or green when the hives sprout for is not preparing food. This dot will change color depending on how on near a meal all the creature is preparing in its to completion. When the circle turns red, red or pink, the, root, the food is ready to serve. What makes the hops about for so intriguing is that they prepare the food inside their bodies with the help of the magic given to them by the fluid during their creation. When hops about for are so finished making food, they crack open to reveal the meal inside, which can range from steaming piles of meat and delicious bowls of soup to, believe, to beautifully arranged fruits and desserts. Once the food is taken, the hops about for it closes again without any harm and goes back to preparing food as needed until a feast is done. <sighs> Hops survivors move around on a single human like foot that is the same white as their egg body. If in the middle of making a meal, it is not uncommon to hear the Hops survivor represent humming in a soft cherry a tune as they open and close. It is also not uncommon to hear the sounds of jostling metal coming from inside them as they move to and fro. It almost sounds like the house of offers carry a multitude of cooking and splicing utensils inside them. However, not even the flu themselves know of what goes on inside a house of offers body. Though given the deliciousness as to the end product, the house of offers magic is a treat for anyone who is invited to a fluix banquet. Whew. I think that's enough for today. These creatures are very entertaining to hear about. It's fantastical, if you will. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. This has been a 12-minute video. I hope you enjoy. Goodbye.